Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of NAC 2014. So um, my name is Jita Pasam Ranjit. I'm a researcher from Nanotech. And before we start, I would like to inform you about safety instructions. We are now in room 34306 of the Thailand Science Park Convention Center. And please be noted that there are four exits from this room. So in case you hear the fire alarm, please proceed to the nearest exit and go to the nearest um, emergency stairs, which are um, this one behind this room and another one next to the elevator. And please don't use the elevator. So once you leave the building, please gather at the assembly point next to this building. And so please show, okay. So there's an assembly point right there. And please don't re-enter the building until further noticed. Um, I also would like to remind you that there's an evaluation form inside the back. Please fill it up and turn it in at the s on the second floor of this building. You will get a small souvenir. Okay. <laughs> and so this morning's session is advances in nanobiosensors from biomedical applications. We have four interesting talks by four distinguished speakers who will show us how nanotechnology could help detecting diseases at early stages. Each talk will be um, 30 minutes long, which roughly divided into 25 minute talk and five minutes for question and answers. So our first speaker today is Professor Feng Yuan Zhang from Korea Research Institute of Bioscience and Biotechnology, or CRIP. Um, Professor Zhang received his PhD in chemical engineering from Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in 1987 and has been working in CRIP since then. His research involves nanobiochips, nanobiosensors, nanobiomaterials, drug discovery, and disease diagnosis. Professor Zhang is currently a director of BioNano Health Guards Research Center at CRIP and also a member of Nanotech International Advisory Board. Um, today he will give us a talk titled Bio Nano Health Guard R&D Project in Korea. Please join me in welcoming Professor Jong. Good morning and uh, thank you, Dr. May. Uh, nice to see you again here. <laughs> so today uh, I'm not going to talk about research detail, just overview of our uh, R&D program. So recently, last year, I got a very big grant from Korean government. So I'm talking about uh, that, just overview. The name of our project is uh, Bio Nano Health Guard Research. This is part of a global frontier program. This is a pretty huge research program, very big grant. And uh, this is supported by Ministry of Science, ICT, and Future Planning. So today, so first of all, I would like to brief you into what Global Frontier Program is. This is actually the most representative research program supported by Korean government these days. This program, each project is funded by about uh, 10 billion Korean won per year, which corresponds to 10 million US dollars for each project. And the total period of you know, the project, nine years, very long-term project. So very good for researchers. This project should be uh, based on 4G strategies. The 4G strategies means the project should be global. R&D, and also the, the project, uh, pro uh, project outcome should be groundbreaking. And also, we should uh, perform group approach for convergence research, and also growth and the sustainability is very important. The goal of this program is to develop world-class core technologies to create a new growth, economic growth of our country. So actually, this uh, Global Frontier Program started off uh, three years ago in 2010. In 2010, 
three proposals selected. After that, the three centers are uh, established. The Medicinal Bioconvergence Research Center in SNU, Seoul Asian University, and the Center of uh, Human-Centered Interaction for Coexistence in KIST in Seoul, the Government Institute like us, and Advanced Biomass r and Center in KAIST. And one year later, in 2011, Center for Multi-Scale Energy Systems Center established in SNU, Seoul Asian Uni National University, and there's another center for advanced soft electricity in post-tech. So you know that yeah, this program, he's a, also the <laughs> professor of post-tech, right? <laughs> also Center for Integrated Smart sensor Sensors and Intelligent Synthetic Power Center was established in KAIST in 2011. And last year, two more centers were established by this program. So one is the Bio Nano, Nano Health Guard Research Center. Today I'll be talking about this. This is ours. And another one is Hybrid Interface Research Center. The last year, there were 132 proposals to get this fund. Only two proposals selected after three times review. So last year I won, you know, the lotto. Right? <laughs> this is something like lotto. So another lotto is, um, in my case, I get uh, additional 1 million US, US dollars from my government, from my institute as a matching grant. So our budget is, uh, uh, in first stage, there, uh, there are th uh, three stages in this program. First stage is two year, second stage is three year, third stage is four year, nine year program. So in the first uh, stage, uh, in my case, our centers will spend uh, 11, US, uh, 11 billion US dollars each year. And the uh, second stage, uh, we expect to increase this budget uh, by 30% and another 30% in third stage. So this morning, not only morning, but uh, some people uh, look like sleepy. So I prepare some movies, Korean movie. Japanese movie and American movie. Oops. How can you know the play this <laughs> video? Can you hear? No? Nothing. Hmm? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we move to the next slide. So, uh, the previous movies uh, regarding the virus, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we have a pandemic occurrence every year worldwide. So, we have a pandemic occurrence such as uh, foot, and, uh, foot and mouth disease and uh, H1N1 viruses. And very interestingly, recently, uh, there is very interesting report on uh, mutant virus. So uh, due to the global warming, the mutant virus uh, found from the you know, glaciers. So very long time, the virus is hidden in the glaciers. And the due to global warming, so glaciers melt away. And we seem to find out a new mutant virus for the melted glaciers. This is uh, one of issue for you know, the emergence of a new mutant virus. And also we have a super bacteria issue in our hospitals, which has a uh, multi-resistance to antibiotics. We're going to handle this uh, you know, the problem in our proposed project. Well, this season, we have uh, many smoggy days in Korea because of dust blown from China. We believe many biohazard materials contained in this yellow dust. This is a big issue also in Korea. We have to mention the social and the economic costs. 
of such uh, infectious disease. In Korea, in 2008, we lost 630 billion Korean won from avian influenza virus. In 2010, we lost 3 trillion, trillion Korean won due to foot and mouse disease. This yeah. year, because of uh, avi another avian influenza, we killed 10 million chickens and buried under the ground, right? And as you know, uh, in 2003, we had a very uh, huge economic impact worldwide. We had 50 billion US dollars just because of SARS in 2003. In 2012, there were 39 deaths in South, Saudi Arabia from new coronavirus. So last year, there were 47 deaths in China because of a new AI, which is H7N9 virus. Also last year, there were killer ticks bearing new virus in Korea. There was a, a big issue in Korea as well as in China. So many, many new viruses reported every year and very huge damages. If you look at the Singapore case in more details, in Singapore, in 2003, due to SARS virus, they lost 30.8% GDP, and unemployment rate was 5.5%, which was the highest of all times, and vacancy rate of water was 65%, and airline profit was 8.2 cents per kilometer, which was the lowest. This is a spread map of SARS in Korea uh, in, in 2003, reported by WHO. The first occurrence of SARS seemed to be at a uh, nice floor of M Hotel in Hong Kong. This is the Marriott. I cannot that, uh, tell the name of this hotel. <laughs> So from this patient A is spread very rapidly from other people stay, who stayed at the same hotel and then spread very rapidly to many other countries like Canada, Ireland, USA, Singapore, Hong Kong, and so on. This resulted in very huge damage, 50, bi 50 billion US dollars loss. So uh, this is, uh, we can think about you know, the how to reduce this huge damage. Okay? This is the uh, basis of our research proposal. How, how can you solve this problem? So we, if we develop technology, new technology to detect, monitor, these viruses and bacteria very early stages, I think uh, we can minimize this social and economic growth. This is a starting point of our re research proposal. So we are aiming to achieve on development of bio nano health technology, which can detect viruses, bacteria, toxins, bioterrors, and many add in you know, biohazardous substances. We named our bio nano health guard research as H guard. H represent health. G U A R D represent global ubiquitous autonomous rapid detection. This is a new word we we made. So we didn't register this you know trade name. <laughs> so just forget, okay? after this uh, slide. This uh, word uh, implies you know, many things. The goal of our research and we have to do in our researches. So we have selected targets for our HGAD program. There are many research targets, but in Korea, we have already eight targets by 
national strategies for infectious disease, influenza, zoonosis, superbacteria, toxin, chronic infection, t TB, and this, uh, cryptogenic infection, climate changes. Out of this, based on some reasons, need of early detection and acuteness, and this, considering the social and the economic impact, we decided to focus initially two targets, influenza virus, and the superbacteria, and later, we want to expand our targets to new infection and toxin and so on, depending on social and economic needs, and also depending on budget, our budget. Also, we have selected uh, core technologies we focus. So we uh, decide the targets, and uh, there are many technologies to be tackled to solve this problem. So out of these many technologies, through patent and pa paper analysis, and uh, we want uh, convergence technologies. Also, personally, uh, the technology we're developing should be enabling technology, not just publications. Should be enabling technologies. This is very important. So we. Uh, Try to, uh, we uh, decide to focus core three technologies, so 3D nano micro hybrid structures, bio content, and the real time sample preparation and sensing. This is our uh, strategies for technology development. So we need bio content discovery and modification, and also we uh, will develop sample preparation method using micro and nano technologies. And we'll develop super receptor for, to get high sensitivity and high sense uh, specificity. And also we'll develop sensing platform based on 3D nanostructures and also biomolecular hybrid nanostructures. Also we'll uh, develop on-site detection through IT convergence technologies. This uh, is uh, our overall technical development strategies. This is uh, one of our concept uh, for our edge guard systems. By converging all the technologies, finally, we'll be able to you know, make such kind of ethical system. It's just concepts. For example, sample collection preparation, bar content, sensing, IT module could be assembled in a single unit. This is a ethical system, one of the ethical systems we would like to develop in this project. Let me go into uh, a little bit more details about our core project. In core project one, there are three sub-unit projects. In sub-unit project one, uh, we are not develop. We are developing lithography systems for 3D nanomicrohybrid structures, and uh, we'll apply uh, them to nanobiological devices. And in sub-unit project two, we are going to develop nanostructures based on organic and inorganic materials. In subunit project three, we will develop assembly strategies of 3D nanopolyhydrons and method for single molecule detection uh, based on plasmonic signal enhancement. This is a summary of core project one. And in core project two, this is, uh, I'm responsible for this project. Uh, in core project one, consists of four sub-unit projects. Sub-unit project one will develop nano-bio interface technologies. Also, we will construct bio-contents libraries, and we will supply the other researchers with these uh, bio-contents to test their, you know, the sensors and uh, filters they are developing. Also, in sub-unit project two, We'll uh, develop uh, technologies for detection of superbacteria based on metagenomics. Nowadays, the 70% of superbacteria are known to be unculturable. So we, we are focusing on unculturable you know, superbacteria in this project. And also, we want to predict new virus based on bioinformatics. And also, in subunit project four, We'll develop IT convergence edge guard systems. 
core project three, there are three sub unit projects here. The first one is uh, in this project, we'll, we are developing separation and uh, uh, liquefaction of, uh, of sam uh, li liquefy sampling method, especially for aerosol pathogens. And also, we are uh, starting on target enrichment and transfer using microfluidic technologies. And in sub unit project two, uh, in this project, uh, we are developing, so we are working on variety of types of uh, biosensors based on uh, different nanostructures, looks like here. And also in subunit project three, uh, we are working on, uh, we are uh, trying to develop new PCR systems, very small sized uh, PCR systems for on-site detections. So we are developing electrical and electrochemical based, you know, detection method of PCR for PCL and we, will develop, we are developing isomer PCL and one colleague PCL systems in this project. As I mentioned, uh, we are now focusing three core projects and uh, I want to practice five, five, five strategies through my, uh, this uh, big, you know, the uh, research projects. I want to uh, commercialize uh, at least five core technologies and also I want to recruit five world top class research team in this project and I want to ex exploit at least five young star scientists because this is very long term programs. I want to bring up the new young world star, you know, I want to make a young world star, you know, scientist. Our vision is to realize safe society for this kind of biohazardous materials through our bio nano health guard systems. We need um, many global research network for these researches. We already, uh, when I uh, proposed, uh, so I got uh, some uh, you know, letters from many institute for cooperation after I, uh, I am selected. Uh, so I got many e uh, email letters. So one of them is Nanotech from uh, uh, Director City uh, Lock. Especially I'm very much interested in Southeast Asian countries because uh, in this region it's very important uh, in terms of the, the, the first occurrence of you know, the mutant viruses. Most of you know, uh, occurrence of mutant virus reported in, in this region. So personally, I'm very much in, interested in cooperation with the Southeast Asian countries, none of the one of them. It, uh, maybe it's not working. Okay, okay, I skip this one. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, what you are going to you know the develop. Hmm? This is just the animations. So, yeah. So we uh, collect airborne particles and, and then we develop, we filter uh, with the uh, filters we developed and we concentrate viruses. And then we, we, you know, we sense these uh, biohazard materials and we hope our you know, etchigar system will be installed in the public you know, area in the future, just in the future. Okay, okay. And next one is, next example is, oops. Okay. If we have call, Cold or flu is very important. If if you catch cold flu, you have to you know the. You have to go to hospital immediately. It's very important. So, using our Etchigard nano diagnosis systems, I think we hope we diagnose uh, this flu or you no know, cold at home. This is just you know the example we want to develop. 
So according to uh, Carey, which is Korea and uh, Economy Research Institute, they reported, so when pandemic influenza hit Korea, we will have a 7.8% decrease in GDP and 10.2% decrease in, in the rate of economic growth. And also we lost more than 100 billion US dollars in trade quantity. So we hope we'll be able to you know, prevent these worst case, worst case scenarios through our you know, technologies. This is very important. And also the, the other is uh, economic impact. The 70% of global diagnostic market is infectious disease markets. So we hope our technology will be used in this infectious disease market in the future. And uh, some Korean companies, uh, we have Korean companies or also other you know, foreign companies to lead the global market in this area. So uh, basically we're gonna develop platform technology in this project. But uh, I want uh, this platform technology should lead to you know, business development. This is very important, like in uh, nanotech. So for this, uh, my role, one of my role is to evaluate technology effectiveness. So many technologies will be developed in each, each project. So in this area, especially nanobiosensor area, the main problem, problem is for commercialization is reproducibility. So we'll check this uh, reproducibility in the main you know, uh, project every time. And then we try to help the researchers to you know, uh, commercialize the technology they developed. For this, we hold technology uh, transfer for every year. And uh, we are going to make industrial consortium and also we'll support you know, the small, and small ventures from the technologies we developed. Starting from outstanding research, we'll focus this. And then we have to make valuable patents. And then we try to make technology transfer and commercialization. So our ultimate goal is to survive as a small and a strong research institute after nine years. So this activity is very important for me. The government push us to survive after nine years. They will stop you know, funding and you have to survive even after nine years. This is very important in this Global Frontier program. So this is a uh, future. I imagine, so our edge guard public systems will be installed in many, many you know, public areas. Also, the edge guard diagnosis can be used uh, in hospital for early diagnosis infectious disease. And also, edge guard portable will be used uh, on site monitoring of uh, virus and bug superbacteria regardless of you know, the places, this is a very portable type. Also, we want to install our you know, the edge guard systems even in the airplane to check the, you know, the high, risk, high risk viruses in the airplane. This is uh, our future. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for the great talk. I really like the concept of um, portable devices. So um, the floor is open for some questions. The, does anyone have questions for Professor Strong? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, how, how quickly can the devices respond? Oh. That, well, my question is about the response time. So response time uh, should be very fast. That's why we need uh, nanotechnologies. Yeah to achieve that. Uh, uh. So if someone sneezes in the plane, I know. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> so uh, many viruses are very dangerous. So do you have a high standard laboratory to do this uh, research? Yeah, we have a PSL3 lab. 
have yes, yes, uh, right. Yes, we have. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so also it's uh, very important to uh, commercialize your uh, technique. Mm -hmm. So you have mentioned that uh, some companies uh, uh, have a job. Yeah. Jo did, yeah. did they have a join? Yeah, I'm uh. Con uh, now uh, maybe uh, more than thirty Korean diagnostic companies will join uh, you join your pro projects. Right, right. right. Uh, okay. Uh. Thank you. More questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Ka uh, let's thank our, okay. <laughs> thank our speaker again.